Well, today is, is really Bamberg showcasing actually what we do here. Um, Cropvale is one of uh, three sites across the UK, along with Aberdeen and Loch Gore, where it's our real proving ground of our varieties, making sure that before we take anything to market, we've tested it to the ultimate to make sure that we've got something that's ready for the modern UK agriculture. Barrenbrook, as many of you know, uh, just 95% of what we do is, is grassland and that across the world. Um, we've recently, yesterday, officially opened our new um, Barrenbrook Brazil, uh, which is a joint venture with Dow Sciences. Um, we've also had something exciting happening in the last month or two. We've put our first grass seed into India. Uh, and that's quite, quite exciting. I saw the press release from, um, from Bastian Barenberg, which actually said they're packing it in one and two kilo bags. Um, and their average herd side is one and a half cows. Um, so they've got a long way to go, but we know with these sort of countries like that, the, the opportunities are massive in terms of growth and what they can produce. Um, so that's quite exciting. The other exciting thing is that we've been now trading in South Africa for two years. Um, and that's another growing market and the Barenbrook family are very keen to keep on with these new markets. Um, this year we're celebrating in the UK 30 years of being Barenbrook, which isn't a lot when the Barenbrook family have been in grass seed 109 years. But as you can see it's continuing to grow. I did some rough figures and I'm happy to be picked up on this later, but if you, um, if you took the top 10% of arable farmers of what they were producing in the UK and the other 90% of them produced as much from their arable crops as the top 10%, the UK will produce an extra 20 to 25% more grain. If you took all the plowable rotational grassland in the UK and the 90% uh, produced what the top 10% were producing from grass, we would have 150% more milk 150% more lamb and beef. So the potential there for better grassland and better grassland management and better production from grass in the UK is still, is still massive. Once Roger and I finish speaking, we're going to split up into four groups and go out onto the plots. And there's going to be four stations of which we're going to try and keep it to 20 minutes on each station that you are going to go to and hopefully question and learn a little bit about some of the things that are going on here at Cropvale. I'm going to hand over to Roger now. Uh, Roger um, is a good chap. He's a friend as well as somebody who looks after our research site. He's a farmer um, who has taken on this site and he'll tell you a little bit more about what he does here and how it came about. I joined Dad in 1976 on the farm and at our peak, we probably had about 130 dairy cows. We were farming about 240 acres. I mean, obviously, when I first started doing this, I didn't really know anything about it at all. Uh, so David Johnson would be my mentor. If I would need any advice, uh, he's the person that I would ring. He draws up a protocol which lists what I should be doing, when I should be doing it. Um, it gives me the cutting dates. Most of the trials here are on a four-cut system, conservation. Um, the Italians get five cuts. They get an extra cut at the beginning of April, which simulates a grazing cut. And it also brings them in line for the first cut with the intermediates around about the 16th of May. Um, and then the lates are cut probably a week after that. Well, they are cut a week after that. Throughout the year, notes are taken. Um, the notes of the things like disease resistance, heading, reheading, uh, persistency, and establishment. So there's all sorts of information that uh, is coming out of this site here. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Roger. So if you want to make your way out, we'll get underway. We, we started here to testing it on the other side and there you see already that even on a small distance you can uh, find very, very big variations in getting good data and Cropville has been proving the last couple of years that it is really giving very reliable and, um, and, and interesting data because what we do is on one side testing for the potential production and we have that side for example in Lochal but also in, in other places where we can say okay this variety is absolutely good 
But what we do here in Cropville is showing that it does not disappoint under bad conditions. And that's of course what we mimic at this site. So that's, that's how we are using the different sites. If you were to start a grass breeding program today, irrespective of how big a budget you had available to you, all the processes and selection stages would still take 14 or 15 years. So although the program started in the 1950s, it really was the 1980s when a few varieties such as Tyrone and Port Stewart, which are still used in the UK market, came onto the market. From our breeding program in Holland, we supply uh, varieties that we test over here. And on top of that, we do all the plantings over here. So uh, each uh, fall, we come out with our team and with our equipment from Holland, and we do the plantings of these plots at this uh, location. One of the most important things is uh, spring yield, of course. Uh, so it's an excellent environment to test uh, for spring yield. Plus we have, for the UK, a uh, rather high level of disease pressure. Okay, so. Uh, we also have behind me over there uh, an, an official NIAB trial to do disease uh, observations. So we do have uh, uh, a nice uh, infestation of uh, rust plus uh, leaf spot over here. So it's an excellent site to select for those diseases plus for spring uh, yield and total annual yield. So what you're looking at here is crimson clover straight perennial Torella, Lucerne, and then the seam clover at the end. What we're doing on this site, we have 49 different varieties of tetraploid Italian, and we have 49 Italian diploids. If we get one variety out of these three replicates to put into national list, we'll be doing well. But we not only do research only on grass, and grass breeding, but we also have additional um, possibilities to work on. For example, uh, we do quite a bit of research in adding, for example, through seed enhancement, um, some additional characteristics for better establishment uh, of our grass seeds um, uh, on the longer term, so that we can maybe also solve there some problems which we have in certain areas with insects or other things. So it's building up a package of technologies we are bringing around the grass seeds and the genetics of it in order to give better solutions to our farmers. That's our aim, in order to create that more stable production. I'm a farmer myself, so I'm very much aware of the costs you know, from feed and fertiliser. Um, so it really, they really do need to look at going back to the basics, soil structure, liming, uh, and really looking after homegrown feeds. You know, they can make so much more, you know, improve profitability so much more by making most of their own homegrown production, be it silage or cereals, whatever it is that they are growing. David Johnson told me last night, we, we talked about it over tea last night, he has men who have drumming on the ground, although it's a hybrid ryegrass and everybody says the majority of length of time a hybrid is going to last is about five years. Drumlin has been on the ground with one particular farmer for almost ten years. So again you can see with the perennial the perennial parentage is coming out, but you're still getting the wee bit of an you know impressive growth coming from the Italian the Italian side into it as well. So very, very impressive grass. Does really, really well stitched in, um, holds its quality, doesn't run to stem, doesn't run, doesn't produce seed head, and slightly well, considerably more sword density than some of the other varieties. So in 1991, Barnbrook became our partners. And one of the big attractions to Barnbrook being the partner was that ability to be able to test varieties on many locations, but also to be able to source interesting breeding material. Because our program at that stage was, was very parochial in its outlook. It was very much focused on Northern Ireland with very much Irish type material in there. It's been said in the different stations that we've been on uh, today, um, it takes 15, 16 or more years for a new variety. Um, so far there are no tools or no ways to speed it up. So we still have, uh, of course you've heard about uses use of molecular markers, etc. and other crops. We don't use those very much in grass yet, so we're still coping with that same 15, 16 or more years to produce a new variety. So we're not going into speed very much. Yeah, yeah, 9 to 11 is when we, we, we put things in here. Um, I liken it to the breeders have it in their nurseries, it goes to high school, it comes here to university, uh, and only one or two will actually get their first grade degree coming out of here. So that's the way I look at it. But uh, uh, as you're well aware, the, uh, uh, the student loan system for this type of thing is very expensive by the time they come out of here. And, and that one 
that one variety that makes out of here has to pay for all the others. So it's, uh, we have to make sure it's actually top notch. Just to give you a bit of background, uh, here in England, estimated that roughly livestock raising about 3.5 million hectares of grassland. However, such a small proportion of that grassland is actually being reseeded. I don't need to tell you guys this. Republic of Ireland, it's estimated 2% of grasslands being received every year um, going on seed sales. In England here, we've seen the amount of permanent pasture increase from 60, 60 to 74% over the last few decades. And actually, if we look at some uh, figures from Northern Ireland from a paper by Trevor Gilliland, we can see that over the same time period, sorry, you can't see that, but from about 1980 right the way through to 2008 there, we have seen a decrease in the volume of seed sales. Reseed is a very expensive operation for any farmer. Uh, we're looking at anything between 200 and 250 pound an acre uh, to reseed. Uh, if he can add another two or three years onto that without any yield detriment, um, it, it speaks for itself. It's, it, it's absolutely worth a huge amount to him. The, the more grass you can harvest, generally the more profitable the farming system is. And I think the interesting thing there is today, I think we are talking about 12 or 13 tonnes of dry matter per hectare. Well, our competitors in New Zealand, under some of their systems, are able to grow 16, 17, and indeed up to 18 tonnes of dry matter per hectare. So we're generally working in around, well, I should say, well, I, I would hope we're working in around, but some of the latest information shows, in fact, uh, many beef and sheep farms are working down here at around five tonnes of dry matter per hectare. Protein is very important to us um, and to the UK agriculture. Um, it's not a crop that we can easily grow and it's one of the most expensive part of the diet, uh, whether it's grazed or whether it's fed indoors to, to cattle, sheep uh, or the dairy industry. So um, any 1% we can get improvement uh, in, in forage is worth about 15 tonnes uh, in the dry matter and getting 2 or 3% more is obviously 40, 50 pounds worth more to the farmer and we can do that without use, losing any other yield. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an excellent situation if we can prove we can get that out there. The other thing that we're doing with the proteins, we've got a lot of subterranean clovers, annual clovers that we're trialling here at the moment. We've tried them over the last two years in other locations. Uh, this is the final year here, hopefully um, if the results come through that we are seeing at the moment, we'll have some exciting new uh, protein uh, crops. Protoplus is one of the ones that we think we'll bring to market next year. There's really a big demand worldwide for having um, dairy products uh, in certain areas, for having more protein coming from meat. That means that we have to intensify the production per hectare because we having, will have less hectares available. But on the other hand, we want to do it on a sustainable way. And that means that we have to bring in much more characteristics than in the past because in the past you were really looking for maximize your uh, nitrogen applications and then just look for the varieties which would produce under those conditions in the best way what we try to do is to say okay now let's optimize and then we talk a lot about nitrogen but one of the other aspects in the medium and long term will be phosphate phosphate will be a problem there's a lot of phosphate important through the feedstuffs into the countries it comes into the cow it comes on the land and it slips away into the water. What we would like to do is really come up with solutions that we can have, um, of can have access to the available phosphate which is in the soil. And we can do that through, for example, seed enhancement uh, treatments in combination with good genetics which have a better root system, etc. Et the most important thing is to quote the border uh, farm management motto, the border farm management uh, uh, society motto is it's no what you do, it's no what you hate, it's what you do with what you hate. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that don't understand, it's not what you have, it's what you do with what you have. We are, as Barrenburg UK, really proud of this site, as you, as you heard, it's one of three that we've got. But we are proud, of it and it's, you know, we don't get many opportunities to show it off to people. Uh, and the background to the, the, the commercial team that we've got in terms of Barenberg and the research. Uh, several millions go into research across Barenberg each year, um, and often all you guys see it is a, a yellow bag turning up um, at your depot, at your farm, um, or in one of your own, own bags, or seed being delivered to you to mix. Um, but it is nice for us to be able to show how much work and how much effort goes in 
to it. And hopefully you can see when we do say, look, there's a quarter of a million gone into that variety to get it to market, you understand where those, where those figures have come from uh, and the efforts that go in. Thank you to all. Um, if you'd like to retire, I think the pig roast is, is ready to go um, and there's some drinks there for you all there. So thank you all very much.